Chris Michalek back here with another video, and this one's timely. So uh, this, I just saw a report on this today, as a matter of fact. And depending on when you're watching this, obviously today, keep in mind, I record, I have to edit. It's a few days going up. So this is going to be probably a few days to a week before when you actually see the original timestamp in this video when it's uploaded to YouTube. But uh, what, I, what I saw with this article kind of surprised me. So the FBI in an unsealed federal affidavit and then the Department of Justice put out a press release kind of confirming a bit of this afterward, actually went into private servers. Now, these are you know, exposed to the Internet because what this is is they went into private servers to try to clean up that massive Microsoft Exchange hack uh, that took place over the last few months, mostly driven originally before other hackers piled in by what we suspect is one of the Chinese government's hacking groups. Uh, Hafnium is the name, uh, in case you were wondering. But um what happened is uh, the you know these ser uh, these servers were vulnerable. If you're running your own Microsoft Exchange email server in your organization, uh, you were vulnerable here. This was a previously unknown exploit, and boy, did China take advantage for weeks and months of just unrestricted access. And what they did was they installed tools, usually known as a web shell in this case, that then granted them other access because hackers always use like a point of entry. So I liken it to somebody breaking into your house because, again, in this case, they're breaking into your network. Uh, it would be like if you left a door, you know, unlocked. Okay, well, they, they got in or they picked the lock, even if you locked it, and they got into the house. Well, they don't care about the door, right? They care about the entry. And then while they're there, they're going to take other things. And in this case, hackers will often, you know, gain access to a single account or gain access to a single system and use that then to what we call escalate their privilege and install other tools, whether those are advanced persistent tools or what have you, uh, they will go in and um, actually uh, then kind of make themselves at home and install other tools. And yes, this stuff can get by antivirus software and other detections that people may have. This is kind of the point. Um, so what the FBI did, though, was they went into a lot of these servers that they saw had not been cleaned up because there's an easy way you can just run a scan on the Internet to find this stuff out and see what's vulnerable, which the problem is, think about it, hackers can do it too. The, this is not some special FBI tool that they used um, to be able to do this. So... Uh, the FBI went in and just cleaned up this web shell that was left by Hafnium. So, like, if other hackers had gotten in the meantime, other stuff was installed, doesn't mean the network's clean. It just means that they didn't want this particular vulnerability still out there. They wanted to clean it up. So they'd remove it, presumably apply a patch or something, and uh, we don't know all the specifics. But this is the first time that we know about that, unbeknownst to an organization, the FBI's gone into their systems to try to fix this. Now, this is a little bit frightening because I don't know about you. I'm not keen on the government getting access to my private stuff. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. You know, I mean, I, I carry a cell phone around. I, I'm aware that this right there tracks me quite a bit. But that being said, I'd also rather not have the FBI without some sort of warrant being able to get in to my uh, to my systems, even if they're vulnerable and that sort of thing. Um, the FBI before has like reached out to organizations and said, hey, you need to clean this up. We can help you. But this is totally different. Question is, does this become kind of a new norm thing? Uh, because cybercrime is getting worse and worse. It's getting more and more profitable. And think about it. If it's financing countries like Russia, China, North Korea, that we are either at odds with or just a really kind of unsteady piece, and I don't, I'm not going to get into geopolitics farther than that. But, you know, sometimes these countries are not aligned with the United States interest and uh, other uh, countries worldwide. So you know, do you really uh, want them to gain more power, gain more access to systems? This can become quickly a national security threat, especially with the fact that we estimate at this point that over 250,000 organizations world worldwide from this one incident, this one Microsoft Exchange vulnerability, were compromised. 250 thousand so it's something we're going to keep an eye on but the best advice i can give you is keep things patched keep up to date designate somebody on your team there it team internally to be kind of your cyber security czar the champion right 
of it so that you know they can keep up as much as possible with this and i realize as a small organization it's tough i mean you know i got a small business here that i run um, working on the youtube channel and everything else uh, my time it, it's tough to keep up with everything and i don't i you know i can't keep up with absolutely everything so what i have to rely on is some tools and other things that i put in place to protect me and that you know me following those best practices is going to if not eliminate my risk certainly drastically reduce it um, so a reminder that if you're looking kind of where to get started on these sorts of things, um, don't forget to check out uh, my two videos on the one thing that you need for cybersecurity, the one biggest thing, and it's free. And then the uh, part two companion piece to that where I mentioned three other things that are just essentials for any organization. It doesn't matter who you are, the things that you're going to need in your small organization. And as a business leader, you're going to want to deploy those as soon as possible. Hopefully you've already got at least a few of those that are on the list. So guys, that's all I got to say about this. Any new information that's actually interesting and not just technical blah, blah that comes out, I'll be sure to do another video on it. We'll talk about it. Um, but, you know, I do like to kind of talk about some things here in the news and you may see these things because I know like uh, about a, two, three weeks after the whole Microsoft Exchange hack was disclosed in my uh, other business that uh, we had uh, clients emailing and saying, hey, are we vulnerable? Or, you know, good news is none of our clients had uh, local email servers uh, with, that they had to worry about. Everything was in the cloud and that wasn't vulnerable. So we were good. But, um, you know, these things do percolate, I realize, and people have questions. So I do try to address these in these videos. I'll be back again next time. Probably just a cybersecurity tips video, but you never know what's going to break between now and then. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Chris Michalek signing off here. Um, don't forget, you can leave a suggestion, comment right down below. You got a question, something you want to see covered in a future video, let me know. I love to get those things. Trust me, it makes my life a lot easier. I'm not just having to think of something in my mind and hope that it's something people find interesting. You know, your questions, let me know that, yeah, okay, this is definitely something I need to cover and this is something that's not clear and people want to know more about. And also, if you like the video, like and subscribe and hit the bell icon, go to all, so that way you'll be notified next time I put up a video. They could be timely like this one, so that's something you'll want to do. Guys, thank you again so much for taking some time out of your busy day to watch. I'll see you guys again in the next video.